All right, back again. Uh, today, we're not at my place, we're at work. This is Husqvarna 760 cut and break. Two blades here on the front. You can only go so deep, I'll show you. This here is a bar. Sorry, get it away from me. That bar, so when you cut into cement, it leaves two grooves cement about that deep. What you do, put your two grooves in the wall, you use this to break it. You send the saw back in to the groove you just made and you go right through 11 inch wall from the outside. This is one of our rental units and it's sustained quite a bit of damage to the block. Um, we've got a brand new long block. It costs more to repair this block than buying a brand new short or long block. So anyway, we're going to take you along on something a little bit different. I don't know how much of this I'm going to record, but we're going to strip this down. Okay. There's a brand new long block. So we're going to strip this saw uh, down to this point. Anyway. Let's get started. We'll move this over here. So on this, I'm going to get rid of this big extension. It's going to start right here. I've already had this side cover off. torque screw right in there. It's already loose. I've left it loose. These are great if you got like a basement you want to put a window in or you want to go through a brick wall to put a door or a window in or a basement you're putting a doorway out. All right, so give me one minute. I'm gonna shut it down and we're gonna pull this clutch. It doesn't really show, but there's an arrow on them to show you which way to turn it to loosen it off. We're gonna pull that off. There's a belt runs up through here. There's a bearing in here. The problem with a lot of these is um, people never run them with water. This is a water connect. There's two bearings in here at Fry's and there's a $90 bearing up here a lot of time at Fry's. You know, it's a rental unit. It, they go through hell and people just abuse the crap out of them. Anyway, let me get a couple more tools and we'll get back at it. press them bearings out. They're $10 each for us to buy. This whole clutch unit, our price, $53. So, you know, $20 bucks you can rebuild it. I'm going to show 
shut you off till that compressor goes off. Already back again. I just taken three screws out. There's the top part of the breather. Don't tell anybody about we're using Dave's bench. She wouldn't like it if he was here. That's why I waited. So Dave's gone. My bench is covered in other projects are waiting for parts. So now if you're working on these 760s and you've never worked on them before, just screw right there, one screw right there, and then down in there there's one, and one in there. Sorry for the bouncing around. You're going to pull this piece to squeeze this. This is part of your air inlet tube. Watch your primer right there. Just watch you don't rip it, that's all. I pull it out away. thing. Anyway, the next thing is this screw right here. That goes into this part of the block. There's a flange and you got to drop it down in there. That holds the carburetor on. This is part of your intake. Best to go right through there. There's a hole. switching over to the other side before I can finish pulling that I got to take this recoil hosing off I'm gonna shut you off because it'll be way way too long of a video so I'm gonna shut you off when I get this off I'll bring it back there's literally these are easy enough to see there's one here here and one in behind here right you have to excuse the exhaust fan running behind me sorry I got to keep it going we painted on the other side today and uh, lots of fumes anyway there's your cover off you get down to that cover, you pull this one. Now this top shroud, there's screws buried down in, one down in there, one down in there, one at the front, I've already taken them off. This is a kill switch wire, on the coil, disconnect. Pop that right there. Sorry, this is all over the place.
So what I did was just this piece that drops down in there holds the wire out of the way to kill switch wire so it doesn't get damaged, cut into. Now, in there, that's the intake. Usually these just fall out. Boom. So right down in here, the throttle rod, I pop it off with my finger. The fuel line on this side. I pop it and of course the fuel right on it. Gonna be back in one minute. Okay, so on this side there's your fuel line that goes into the carb. There's a primer on the other side. The fuel line goes onto here. So there's your primer. There's your carburetor. It all screws to this intake block. You got an upper and lower throttle. There's your air inlet tubes. You got the three holes. You gotta make sure you should replace sorry. Should replace all these when you're putting it back on. Alright. Um, anyway, I just wanted to show because you know a lot of people are not Sure, they're always looking for the screw, they're not sure to get the carb off. That throttle rod right there, it just snaps down into that groove right there. Pretty easy when you see it in person. Anyway, now I'm going to take off this top handle and I'll turn you back on. There's just a couple of screws here, here. Two more right here, and we'll pull this whole bottom piece off. There's two on here, two on the other side. All right, I'll bring you back when I got that much off. All right, bring you back again. This is the other side, so there's one, two screws right here. See how this one's all filled in? I usually just use a dental pick. Clean the worst of crud out. There's one more mounting spot for the motor right there. That holds the motor to the back handle. You've got a ground screw for your kill switch that's got to be disconnected. And I had told you I was going to pull this. This is already on the new motor. If you go down through here, when it's together, right down through, there's a screw in there. That's your other mounting point for this side. I'm going to take this off. And the other two in that whole front handle assembly will come right off the motor. I'll bring you back when I'm ready to do that. So me pulling these bolts here, and these two on the other side, was for the sake of cleaning it up. But if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. Take that hose out. So there's one motor fastening bolt to this frame. The other one, right here. You get at it, through right there. Undo your ground screw from there. Then you have the other bolt right there that I pulled about. Now, boom. There's your motor out. I think I'll just, for sake of time, let's leave that together and clean up that. I gotta clean up all these pieces. I still gotta get the muffler off. So there's one bolt there, one bolt there, one there, and there's one a lot of people don't realize. It's down in there. You get down through there to get it out, and that's where I normally pull this bracket out to let you get back in there. See how it's sticking out? And there's a bolt there. You can see if you're looking in there. Sorry, let's tip this up. Anyway, the bolt's right down in there. Okay. And we've got two screws here. Get out the ignition coil. I didn't bring my puller. Simple nut. There's a pulling point there and there. Alright, so I'll have to do that later. Uh, when I get the parts cleaned up, if I start putting it back together, I'll bring you back.